Hey everyone, how's it going? So, okay, um, I've just, yeah, so obviously you guys are mostly, most of uh, you guys on this channel are subscribed to the same people that I watch and um, know everything that's been going on um, as far as the Lordship Salvation debate and, you know, if, if I didn't say that it didn't get me um, seeking and, and looking and, because I had never really understood like lordship salvation. I've heard that term before, but I mean, I never looked into it. I never understood what that meant, what that was, who, you know, who taught that. Um, so like recently just seeing all of this debate and really trying to understand where my view was uh, and is, um, I've been looking into it and just praying and asking the Lord for his truth. I just, Lord, like I, I want to be led in the way of everlasting. Um, whatever that is, you know, I, like, so, um, and this is just, he's led me to some scripture, which is exactly where, um, he's shown me freedom. Um, and so I'm just going to share a little bit with you guys. So the first one is second John, um, verse one, the elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all those who have known the truth, because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. So he's, he's describing a love he has for the truth, which is Jesus. And that Jesus abides in us. And so anyone that the truth abides in, that Jesus abides in, we also love them because Jesus uh, abides in them and we love that truth. We So it's in the truth that we love one another, right? So grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we received commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but to that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So, you know, when... when lordship like when we when we talk about following god's commandments right what we what i see here what i hear in in the scriptures is that what his commandment is is to walk in truth it says in verse four um i rejoice greatly that i have found some of your children walking in truth as we received commandment from the father and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. So basically, that's walking in truth, walking in um, the faith of Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus. So then I was like, okay, Lord, how do I walk in that, right? Because then it's like, okay, you have to, you know, um, then we go to the works and what, you know, staying in the will of God. And so um, the Lord brought me to John chapter 6. We'll start in verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. So here it's telling us that when we do do works, when we labor, our heart should be desiring the food which endures to everlasting life so we shouldn't be laboring um for rewards or for blessings from god because that makes it transactional that makes it like you're coming before god and you're like what i love you and now i want to get what i you know what i can get from you instead of coming before him and just wanting him um and more of him because the food uh, which endures for, to everlasting life, that's Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. But um, So let's go on. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? So they're asking, How do we labor for this food that endures to everlasting life? 
um, Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. So, like, Jesus literally just said that the work, the only work that he wants us to pursue is believing in him. Um, sorry, I'm hearing mom. Hold on one sec. Okay, um, so let's see. Let's move on to, oh, verse 30. Therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. Moses did not give you. Okay, yeah. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us the bread always, this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should not lose, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, the works God wants us to perform are right here, to believe in the one he sent, to remain in the will of God um, means that right here, and this is the will of God, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. That is His will for you to have, for you to believe and have everlasting life. And so, um, you see the danger when you begin to say. I choose, I chose to obey. I am making him the Lord of my life because when I got saved, um, I just knew I was a sinner and that I believed that he died for my sins. Um, I wasn't ready to give my life to him. I just believed. It, it became real to me. Um, and it took a long, long time of refining to work out certain and different spots. And I'm still, it's still working right now. And praise God, he's covered all of that. And I'm, I can't live condemned because then I stay in those situations longer. Um, and Understanding, so it says, I believe in Romans 1, 5 or 6, that obedience is something that comes from faith, uh, from our faith. So I can't muster it up. I can't choose to do it, choose to be obedient, um, because obedience is a gift given to me through my faith in Christ Jesus. So even the obedience, um, the illusion of of your own obedience is um, you're giving yourself the ability to boast in yourself and you're taking away the glory from who it really belongs to, which is Jesus. Um, he is the one. God is sovereign over everything. Um, so understanding, too, that, you know, it's, we don't understand what God is doing inside of someone and when they outwardly don't seem obedient and when they um, are, you know, when the to the world it doesn't look like they're being obedient, if they believe in Christ Jesus, even in all of that suffering, um, the Lord is there with them and they are being obedient to God. They are... Um, they are believing in Jesus Christ. And so we don't know what God is doing when he allows us because 
I mean, Jesus even said to Pontius Pilate, you have no authority except what's been given to you from heaven. Everything that we do, a saved and sealed believer, is allowed, and there is, um, we are in his hands. He is Lord. He has control over all of it. So I, I can't choose to stop. I can't choose to go. I can't, I, like, I can just believe in him. And then he does everything else. And I rest. It's freedom. And so many, the veil is on so many eyes of people who don't understand this word. And I know like before too, this whole situation with, you know, all the debates going on has really forced me to like delve into where these dangerous thoughts that I still had um, and these dangerous ideas of, of being obedient or seeking holiness, wanting to, in, in your mind, wanting to be closer to the Lord, but realizing that it's nothing that you do that makes you holy. Like, Jesus wants us to look at him. He wants us to believe in him and grow in our belief of him. And, like, he becomes more precious to us that way because I'm overwhelmed by the grace he's given me the grace he has for me. And then it's like understanding his love for me transforms my love for other people. That in my ignorance, he still is absolutely merciful with me and is continuously revealing new things to me all the time. Um, because I am still in such ignorance, you know? And, uh, yeah, like this has had me really look into, you know, I used to be under like Paul Washer teachings and I was so depressed. Like I'm a survivor of those teachings. I'm, you know, because I thought that either I was just deceived and never saved at all. Um, and you know, I was just fooling myself because I couldn't be obedient, obedient, or I just didn't want to be obedient sometimes, no matter how much I love the Lord and I hated myself and I was in this turmoil and I'm like, you know, and that's just the truth of what it is, guys. That's, I, I, you know, you know, and when I got saved, it didn't all just magically go away and I became like a, you know, I became Jesus. That's not what happened. Jesus came and dwelled in me, is dwelling in me now and he's leading me and, and teaching me and he's conforming me and he's, um, granting, obe he's, you know, changing me to be obedient here. And, um, in my disobedience, he still uses it for his glory. All of it. There's been places that I've been because of disobedience that he's used me and how, I, and, he, and that was a good work that he ordained in my disobedience. We don't know what God's doing. He's much bigger than us and he's, so much more powerful than we give him credit for. We don't have to do a thing. We don't, we believe that's it. Because then if you say, I'm choosing, I chose, you're giving yourself that credit that does not belong to you. The ability that you have, the obedience that you have, everything that you, the breath in your lungs, everything is his. Every good thing is his. Everything that you do on your own merit is not good ever. Um, and that's where a lot of people are like, yeah, well, it is the Holy Spirit. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. No, that's wrong. You are not choosing to listen to the Holy Spirit. That's not true at all. And if you're saying that, then you're giving yourself room to boast. You're giving yourself room to say, at the end, you know, when you're before the throne, well, I chose to listen to the Holy Spirit. Lord, didn't you see that I drove out those demons? I did all these works. I did all this because I, he, that's what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. I listened to that and I did it and I chose, I chose. That's not how it works. We listen to the Holy Spirit by believing in Christ Jesus and our life lived out is literally just what he's decided for it to be. And he uses all of it, good and bad. It is so freeing. This is what was worth dying for with all of the disciples. And this is what's worth protecting for me because it's the gospel that saved my life. When I got saved, 
I knew I was a sinner that needed salvation, and Jesus died for my sins, and that was it. I didn't make him the Lord of anything. I didn't repent of my sins, none of it. He saved me right then and there, and then I fell under lordship salvation, just like a Galatian. I started in grace, and I continued in my flesh, and here we are back at grace again. Praise God, and I hope every single one of you that is in any kind of legalistic um bondage in Jesus name that he lifts the veil and he and he shows you his truth that it is finished it is finished his blood his sacrifice covers is so powerful guys just look at him just love him just believe in him and and, and like the love thing too because i noticed that too it's like you have to love him it's understanding abiding in his love he loves you Concentrate on that. Focus on his love for you, not your love for him. Your love for him sucks. Sorry, guys. It sucks. His love for you is perfect, and it's beautiful, and it's it's relentless, and it's enduring, and it's patient, and it is life-changing. His love is what we abide in. He is our first love because before we even came into existence, he was in love with us. That is beautiful. So, I came on here because I just, this is a beautiful revelation that the Lord has fought to give me. And it is something that I will fight to let everyone know for the rest of my life. And I love you all so much. And you have a blessed day.